question 11, which one contains 54.1% of calcium? This one is a trial and error question. So what you can do is find out the MR of the whole compound and then the amount of calcium that contributes to the MR on top. So then you multiply by 100%. For this case, calcium hydroxide, 40 plus oxygen and hydrogen times 2. That will give us actually the answer of 54.1%. If it doesn't work for the first option, you have to keep trying the rest of the option to see which one fulfills the 54.1%. Number 12, we have aluminium reacting with barium nitrate. What mass of barium oxide will be produced when 5.4 grams of aluminium is used? So we start off with 5.4, we divide by MR, aluminium is 27, so we get 0 0.2 moles. And then we are interested in barium oxide, so 10 give us 3 moles. 0.2 will give us 0.06 moles by ratio. Once we have 0.06 moles, we multiply by the MR of barium oxide. You can refer to your data booklet, 153. That will give us 9.18 grams. Thirteen is more of a recall question. You have to know that calcium carbonate is used as a building material, it's a part of marble, and we can use it to neutralize acidic soil. It's not used as a lining in the furnaces. Magnesium oxide, high melting point, it will be used as a lining in the furnace, so 4 is correct. Not used as a building material, nor used to adjust uh, soil pH. So option is C. We have different ions in a river and what can be precipitated if we add calcium hydroxide? It is a question of which one of the following are, are soluble or insoluble. Precipitated means insoluble. Among the four options, your calcium carbonate is the insoluble substance. So your calcium will react with your carbonates and you precipitate out calcium carbonate. Fifteen. What happens when ammonia is added to water okay, to form an equal solution of ammonia? Ammonia is more basic than water. So water will donate a proton to your ammonia. You will get NH4 plus and OH minus. And so we have ammonium ions. We have ammonia molecules. Your ammonia will not be acidic enough to donate a proton to water. Yes. In other words, we will not form NH minus. Okay. That will not happen. So there will not be any amides. Sixteen calcium oh, carbon, nitrogen and sulfur. What statements is correct? What statement well, of the three are correct. So all of them are linear. Carbon monoxide is lean carbon dioxide is linear. NO2 is bent, there's a lone pair. Sulfur dioxide is bent. So A is out. In XO2 each element has the highest oxidation number. Um, we can just use one to to show that this statement is false. If we have SO3, sulfur trioxide, right, it will actually we have a higher oxidation number than when it was SO2. All of them dissolve to form dibasic acids. We will get H2CO3, HNO3 or HNO2, 
depends H2SO3 HNO3, HNO2 are monobasic so this is also wrong all of them are formed as a result of burning petrol yep, your carbon dioxide comes from your hydrocarbons burning your nitrogen oxides is when your the air nitrogen in the air and oxygen in the air combines okay. your sulfur dioxide comes from the sulfur particles in your petrol so they can come out from burning petrol 17 which oxide is insoluble in alkali the alkali will not be dissolving your basic substances okay. your alkali can dissolve your amphoteric or acidic substances but not your basic ones Eighteen. This one shows the variation of the first ionization energy. If it's first ionization energy, the peaks here, Q and Y, are actually from group eight. And then we work backwards. This will be group seven all the way to one. This will be group seven all the way to one accordingly. So from there, we can actually check the other options. Okay. Q and Y are in the same period. No, Q and Y are actually different periods. I think they are along the same groups. Increase from R to Y is due to increasing atomic radius. R to Y increases is due to actually the decrease in atomic radius. It's harder to remove electrons. There's a small deviation from S to T. Okay, because S will be your removing from the S orbital and T is removing from the P orbital and it's not because of decreased shielding it's actually further distance between V and W V will be group 5 so we have P3 W is group 6 so we have P4 and there's a pairing in P4, slight repulsion, so it's slightly easier to remove one electron from P4. Nineteen. We have elements J and K, both from period three. J has the smallest radius. So J smallest radius in period three will be your chlorine. Okay, most highest uh, effective nuclear charge and there are only two elements in period 3 that have a lower melting point than K so let's see what whether we can find chlorine compounds first it's between A and D so this is our J and we have to find K there are only two elements that has a lower melting point than K so between phosphorus and magnesium okay. phosphorus is the one that fulfills this condition the two elements that has lower melting point than um, phosphorus will be our chlorine and argon and okay, so the rest are actually have higher melting point than phosphorus so K will be phosphorus J will be chlorine I don't think that this is the correct way to name the alcohol okay, the, the number should be smaller for the given to the as small as possible for the alcohol but if we go um, based on this description accordingly we should have a pentanol and at carbon number 4 we have our alcohol group carbon number 2 we have our bromine group so 1, 2, three four five okay four alcohol group two is bromine group okay. although I will actually name this as four bromo penta two or okay. but we go according to what we are given then
21 how many isomers are there for C2H2Br so this is a alkene that contains a double bond and two bromines so we sort out how many possibilities we can have the bromine could be on the same carbon the bromine could be on different carbons and don't forget there's also a possibility of cis trans so even though these are on different carbons it's a diff this is a cis version there's also the trans version so we have a total of three Twenty-two. Which one gives us the best yield of two chloropropane? Okay. Chlorine gas with propane gas. This one is free radical substitution. This one, we cannot control how many hydrogens are substituted and where they are substituted. So the yield is not really well controlled. Chlorine gas with propane in the dark. This is propane. With chlorine gas, we actually get two chlorines instead of one okay we only want one of the chlorines on the molecule proper 2 all with dilute NaCl no reaction propanol with PCl5 propanol the OH here with PCl5 the Cl will replace this OH at this specific uh, location so this one will give us the best yield of 2 chloropropane Pentin reacts with cold dilute acidified manganate. What happens is you will get our diol. Okay, cold dilute. So we will have an OH here and then an OH on the other side. Twenty four including structural and stereoisomers, how many isomeric products can be produced? Alcoholic KOH. So we have our two chlorobutane. When we have alcoholic KOH, it actually removes the Cl together with a neighboring hydrogen. It's actually elimination reaction. So if we remove the H from here, the double bond will be formed from here. We have this molecule. No cis trans, just this molecule alone. If we move the Cl here and the H from the other carbon, we have a double bond here. This molecule is a, can have a cis version, can also have a trans version. So we have a total of three possible products. Twenty-five CFCs that contains fluorine. It's more stable than CFCs that contains the chlorine. Why so? Because the CF bond is stronger. It's harder to break. So it's less reactive compared to the CCL bond, which is weaker, easier to break. Okay, that's why those that contain fluorine are more stable. Twenty-six. Which one will give us the highest percentage of a product by SN1 reaction? SN1 reaction will be favored by tertiary halogens, or tertiary halogen alkane. So if you look across the options, the first one is secondary, secondary, primary, and the last one is tertiary, which will be favored by SN1 reaction.